Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Today we're going to conclude a two-part series on drawings, how to make them look their best, as well as have on them accurate and up-to-date information without any extra work. So how is it that this can happen? Well, it involves a number of different aspects. So let's jump right in. What you're looking at is a drawing, and what we're going to see is how this happens. Let's look at the format. The format consists of a lot of different elements, lines and tables and text and pictures and so on. Let's start with the lines. You could select line and, and put lines anywhere. You could be very careful as you create these lines, snapping to their endpoints uh, and waiting for uh, perpendicularity, horizontal constraints to be automatically set up for you. Um, I like to do it this way. First, I go to uh, the draft grid and I'll show the grid and I'll also specify the grid parameters. I like to go with X and Y spacing. Right now I've got it set up to be an eighth inch. The next thing is to go to my sketch preferences and turn on horizontal and grid intersection as snap preferences. So now when I create a line they're always horizontal, they're always exactly uh, an increment of an eighth inch or so and I can quickly go through creating all the lines and boxes and so on that make up your format. Great! How do you get the data to show up on here? Well, let's go first to the sketch of preferences. I don't want to leave those on all the time and back to view and turn off the grid. Okay, so let's look at a couple of things on here. For one, you'll see I've got a, a note here model file, that's just a regular note, but then this one shift 7 or ampersand for model name and drawing name. I put both of those on here and those query the model or models that go onto this drawing automatically replacing this text with appropriate model parameter. There's a number of model parameters that come for free with Pro Engineer, but then you can also add any model parameter or user-defined model parameter to your format as well. The list of the parameters that come for free are available through the help. If you go select the functional area, detailed drawings, setting up the drawing parameters as well as the system parameters, these are the parameters that, that ProEngineer provides for free. Drawing name is one of them. The kind of format that's on there. There's model name. You might want today's date, total sheets, the number of sheets, the view scale, things like that. Now those those kind of parameters you could just apply in a note. If you want to go further though, you'll need to add them in a table. Now you'll look here and you'll see that I've got a table kind of hidden underneath here. I'll move it out here so you can see what's in it. First of all, there's a number of text items that are not in the table. You can see that they're just superimposed. And then there's a number of text items that are in the table. Now, how do you get a table to look like this? Insert a table. Now I like to do ascending, starting from the bottom and going up. And then also for a title block for a format, I like it to go leftward, starting from the right and going off to the left. And then I'll also use by length rather than by number of characters. And I'll do that so that I can add maybe an inch for the first column, an inch for the second column, three inches for the third, and uh, maybe uh, a half inch for the last one with uh, maybe a quarter inch spacing between them. And that gets me a table that is exactly the same sizes that I'm already using for my format. Now, if I pick a box, I can put text in it. If I right click when I pick, I can pick a column or a row, if I click the third time right click, I get the whole column, select that with the left mouse button, then right click, and now I have a line display option. And what this allows me to do is to blank individual lines if I'd like to. That doesn't change the cell structure underneath. It's still the same table as it was before. If I'd like to merge particular cells, then I go to the table merge cell, and now this is now one cell. I can center text in it and so on, where these are still individual cells. And then the last thing 
that you can do on a format is a format you can go to line style and I can pick this entire box and I can change it to be perhaps a geometry font and that's gonna make that whole box white cool the last thing I'd like to look at here is how do you put a picture on here well that's actually pretty easy through insert you go to object the kind of object that you want to put on here is from file where you just browse where I've got my bitmap these can be sized just grab them from the corner um, there's really no way to keep the aspect ratio so just size them with care they can be placed anywhere on the drawing and so on click them to delete them and so on and that's how you get your objects on there okay now that you've got your format all you need to do is take careful note of the kind of or the names of the parameters that you're using in your title block for new objects you're going to want to have your start part have in it all the, the correct model parameters for existing objects you can take advantage of a nice option available in the model tree I'm gonna to go to settings and open an existing setting that I've already got that adds to the model tree a number of different parameters now these parameters uh, or, or the lack thereof indicate where the parameters are missing for example if uh, I need a treat parameter well by clicking in the model tree allows me to specify that it's to be a string and maybe I'll just put a hyphen for now for uh, for that particular part and for this part I might put uh, I don't know maybe paint for your parameter for for that uh, particular one or you can just change these now these are already ampersand material now that means when I put this model on a drawing that information is automatically parsed and again I'll be adding the details the formats and the model tree to my website if you'd like to download them another method to add parameters to your model is through tools parameters for in this case here assembly these parameters are already added here uh, as well as others um, and they can be added that way and that way you can do it through a map key okay so the the next thing I'd like to touch on is how do you get all this information to come together easily the first step is a couple of new config options and they are drawing setup file this is where you specify specifically where your special DTL is the pro format directory this is where your special formats are going to be and then a special template that you're going to use to uh, to automatically place your views and set up your DTL and so on so there's a couple of things the DTL we talked about that right click properties drawing options and this is where you can read in your DTL now if you set up your config option this stuff this will happen by itself which is very nice but the last thing I'd like to talk about is that the DTL for the format and the DTL for the drawings is something that are separate from each other and so I would recommend that you sync them uh, and you have to do that manually so make sure that they're the same the last thing I'd like to touch on is the template so what is a template we're gonna make a new drawing it's just gonna give it a name it's not gonna have a model just gonna make it empty so it's just a regular drawing or this template has on it view type and view location as well as the parameters for those views so how do you set those up well you make a drawing and then through applications you change it to a template and this is where you have a new set of options if you'd like to insert a template view and this is where you specify oh, a number of different things about your views so this is where you place your views and how they're placed so so the first one let's give it a name we'll call it uh, call it the front view it's going to be a general view the view state scale is not going to be special but what we're going to do is we're going to specify the model display to be no hidden tan display to be um, dimmed for example and then we'll place the view we'll put it maybe right here that'll be fine then what we're going to do is we're going to insert another view and this is where it's not going to be general it's going to be a projected view where we're going to specify that it is projected from front and then where are we going to place that view well we probably put it over here someplace 
and that's all that exists in template except for one other thing right click go to properties and this is where you specify again that same DTL so that they're all in sync so you want to make sure that it has the correct DTL in it and then utilizing this template it automatically comes with the DTL it places the views that are named the parameters are already in your parameters you add the format it automatically populates and then you've got it so I hope a little of this made sense to you I hope you're able to pick up a little bit along the way and uh, and use this stuff make it you make it work for you so that your drawings come together quickly and easily and they're more attractive as well as accurate my name is Leo Green and I hope to see you again at another PTC Express video tip of the month have a great day thanks for watching